This sound file contains the spoken word version of a Wikipedia article on Embrace, Extend, and Extinguish. It is recorded by user S. Whistler, and the material is recorded on the 10th of May, 2012. Embrace, Extend, and Extinguish from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. Embrace, Extend, and Extinguish Embrace, Extend, and Extinguish, also known as Embrace, Extend, and Exterminate, is a phrase that the U.S. Department of Justice found was used internally by Microsoft to describe its strategy for entering product categories involving widely used standards, extending those standards with proprietary capabilities, and then using those differences to disadvantage its competitors. Contents 1. Origin 2. The Strategy 3. Examples 4. Variant 5. Companies other than Microsoft Origin The strategy and phrase The strategy and phrase, Embrace and Extend, was first described outside Microsoft in a 1996 New York Times article entitled Microsoft, Trying to Dominate the Internet, in which writer John Markoff said, Rather than merely embrace and extend the Internet, the company's critics now fear Microsoft intends to engulf it. The phrase embrace and extend also appears in a famous motivational song by Microsoft employee Dean Ballard and in an interview of Steve Ballamer in the new, by the New York Times. The more widely used variation, Embrace, Extend, and Extinguish, was first introduced in the United States and Microsoft Antitrust trial when the Vice President of Intel, Stephen McGeady, testified that Microsoft Vice President, Paul Maritz, used the phrase in a 1995 meeting with Intel to describe Microsoft's strategy towards Netscape, Java, and the Internet. The strategy's three phases are 1. Embrace development of software substantially compatible with a competing product, or implementing a public standard. 2. Extend. Addition and promotion of features not supported by the competing product or part of the standard, creating interoperability problems for customers who try to use the simple standard. 3. Extinguish. When extensions become a de facto standard because of their dominant market share, they marginalize competitors that do not or cannot support the new extensions. The US Department of Justice, Microsoft critics, and computer industry journalists claim that the goal of the strategy is to monopolize a product category. Such a strategy differs from Jay Allard's originally proposed strategy of embrace, extend, then innovate, both in content and phrases. Microsoft claims that the original strategy is not anti-competitive, but rather an exercise in its discretion to implement features it believes customers want. Examples Browser incompatibilities The plaintiffs in the antitrust case claimed that Microsoft had added support for ActiveX controls in the Internet Explorer web browser to break compatibility with Netscape Navigator, which used components based on Java and Netscape's own plug-in system. On CSS data, etc. A decade after the original Netscape-related antitrust suit, the web browser company, Opera Software, has filed an antitrust complaint against Microsoft with the European Union, saying it calls on Microsoft to adhere to its own public pronouncements to support these standards, instead of stifling them with its notorious embrace, extend, and extinguish strategy. On Office Documents In a memo to the Office Product Group in 1998, Bill Gates stated, One thing we have got to change in our strategy. Allowing Office Documents to be rendered very well by other people's browsers is one of the most destructive things we could do to the company. We have to stop putting any effort into this and making sure that Office Documents very well depends on proprietary IE capabilities. Anything else is suicide for our platform. This is a case where Office has to avoid doing something to destroy Windows. Breaking Java's Portability 
The antitrust case's plaintiffs also accused Microsoft of using an embrace and extend strategy with regards to the Java platform, which was designed explicitly with the goal of developing programs that could run on any operating system, be it Windows, Mac, or Linux. They claimed that by operating the Java native interface, JNI, from its implementation and providing JDirect for a similar purpose, Microsoft deliberately tied Windows Java programs to its platform, making them unusable on Linux and Mac systems. According to an internal communication, Microsoft sought to downplay Java's cross-platform capability and make it just the latest, best way to write Windows applications. Microsoft paid Sun $20 million in January 2001, $26.3 million in present-day terms, to settle the resulting legal implications of their breach of contract. More Java Issues Sun sued Microsoft over Java again in 2002, and Microsoft agreed to settle out of court for $2 billion U.S. dollars, $2.58 billion in present-day terms. Networking in 2000, an extension to the Kerberos Networking Protocol, an Internet standard, was included in Windows 2000, effectively denying all products except those made by Microsoft access to the Windows 2000 server using Kerberos. The extension was planned through an executable, whose running required agreeing to an NDA allowing third-party implementation, especially open source to allow developers to implement the new features without having to agree to the license. Users on Slashdot posted the document, disregarding the NDA, effectively allowing third-party developers to access the documentation without having agreed to the NDA. Microsoft responded by asking Slashdot to remove the content. The Microsoft extensions to the Kerberos introduced in binary form in Windows 2000 have since been described in RFC 3244 and RFC 4757, and these extensions have been listed in the Microsoft Open Specification Promise. This document relates to Microsoft-owned or Microsoft-controlling patents that are necessary to implement the technologies listed. Microsoft's legal statement concerning unrestricted use of Microsoft intellectual property also includes the Kerberos Network Authentication Service v5. Instant Messaging In 2001, CNETnews.com described an instance concerning Microsoft's instant messaging program. Embrace, AOL's IM protocol, which everyone was using in the 90s and early 2000s, Extend, with proprietary Microsoft add-ons which added new features but broke compatibility with AOL software. Gain dominance since Microsoft had a 95% OS share and their MS Messenger was provided for free. And finally, extinguish and lock out AOL's IM software since AOL was unable to use the modified MS patented protocol. Adobe Fears Adobe Systems refused to let Microsoft implement built-in PDF support in Microsoft Office, citing fears of EEE. Current versions of Microsoft Office have built-in support for PDF, as well as several other ISO standards. Employee Testimony In 2007, Microsoft employee Ronald Alpin gave sworn testimony for the plaintiffs in Comes and Microsoft, in which he cited internal Microsoft emails to justify the claim that the company intentionally employed this practice. Variant An older variant of the phrase is Embrace, Extend, Then Innovate. In J. Allard's 1994 memo, Windows, the next killer application on the Internet, to Paul Maritz and other executives at Microsoft. The memo starts with a backgrounder on the Internet in general, then proposes a strategy on how to turn Windows into the next killer app for the Internet. The memo reads, In order to build the necessary respect and win mindshare of the Internet community, I recommend a recipe not unlike the one we've used with our TCP IP efforts. Embrace, extend, then innovate. Phase 1. Embrace. All participants need to establish a solid understanding of the infrastructure of the community, determine the needs and trends of the user base. Only then can we effectively enable Microsoft system products to be great Internet systems. Phase 2. Extend. 
Establish relationships with the appropriate organizations and corporations with goals similar to ours. Offer well-integrated tools and services compatible with established and popular standards that have been developed in the Internet community. Phase 3. Innovate. Move into a leadership role with new Internet standards as appropriate. Enable standard off-the-shelf titles with Internet awareness. Change the rules. Windows become the next generation Internet tool of the future. Companies other than Microsoft During the browser wars, other companies beside Microsoft introduced proprietary, non-standard compliant extensions. For example, in 1995, Netscape implemented the font tag, among other HTML extensions, without seeking review from a standards body. With the rise of Internet Explorer, the two companies became locked in a dead heat to out-implement each other with non-standards compliant features. In 2004, to prevent a repeat of the browser wars and the resulting morass of conflicting standards, Apple Inc., maker of Safari, Mozilla Foundation, maker of Firefox, and Opera Software, maker of the Opera browser, formed the Web Hypertext Application Technology Working Group to create open standards to complement those of the World Wide Web Consortium. Microsoft has so far refused to join, citing the group's lack of patent policy as the reason.